Hey guys, Darcy here, and today let's talk about file organization. Let's get into it. All right, so this would be a little bit different of a video, but it's super important because you would be surprised how often I end up dealing with uh, different producers, engineers, um, where I can tell that the file structure uh, and the way that they name their files and things that they do don't benefit them in the long run, that they end up running into more problems and complications. So I wanted to just kind of go over how I structure um, uh, a project so that I have the most flexibility and ability to quickly uh, make moves. So what we're looking at here is um, uh, one of the uh, projects that I've recently completed for, for our client. And this is uh, the, the, the main folder for everything. You can see here at the top, the title of the song is Game Over. And the title of that main folder um, is including the BPM and the key of the song. This actually comes with Luna whenever you name your file, both the uh, actual um, uh, project file and the folder that it lives in. So the folder here will share the same name. When you update the file name, it'll update the folder name as well. It'll keep those two things in sync, which is a nice feature. So we first always include, at least in my process, the name of the song, the BPM, the key. That way, whenever a file gets sent out, people don't have to come back and ask me that question if they need that answer. Then when the client sends me their stems or track outs, I'll create a folder for that with inside the project folder. The reason why I'm going to also include multiple different subfolders in this project is so that if I ever, somebody said, you know, send me everything, send me the Luna files, everything, I can right click on this, go uh, down to compress and zip the whole thing up and everything I know is in here because it's all within this one main folder. So that's just like a, a, a safety move to ensure that I have things in the right place. So then we have the stems and this is all the different stuff that the client sent me. In this scenario, they sent me some files and then they had to re-record stuff and change uh, vocals for a featured artist and stuff like that. And so um, I have an archive here of other stuff they had sent me. But since I don't need it, I just call it archive and do an underscore um, and move everything in there. In case, you know, someone will come back and say, hey, you know, grab this thing from the, this old file. I have it, but I know that I'm most likely not going to need it. You may also wonder, why do I put the underscore before archive? Well, the directory structures tend to work that they alphabetize in this order. Symbols numbers and then letters so if i put a symbol like underscore at the beginning i know it would always be at the top and i just want my archive folder at the top i don't want it moving all around where i can't find it if i need to get to it it's just less obvious so i just put it there it's always at the top i underscore it in lower cases so it looks less important to me that's just a nuance for myself but then you know it's there and i know where to get it to it then i have instrumental and vocals broken out because there i just wanted the the structure of this so i can easily find it i don't have to go and find one giant folder of a bunch of different stems and read the names um, and within the vocals there are multiple different people there's re-records and clean stems where I run RX cleaner on stuff and I've organized it so that way I have the original raws and I have the versions that I've cleaned up and all of that's nicely organized uh, and then a reference file um, that was labeled differently and I put ref at the beginning of the file name just so I don't forget what that is later all right so we'll close all that out now Exported files is a folder that comes from Luna. Whenever you export it, it will automatically create this initial folder and put everything in here. And in another video that I've, I've done before, um, I actually show how to go over and create uh, versions inside of Luna. So within your project, you can have multiple versions. And I name my versions version 1, version 2, version 3. You can name them however you want, but as I name them, it allows me when I export, because the version will get included, uh, the, sorry, the version name will be included in the file, you'll see here that in the archives, I have multiple other versions, you know, um, known version is 1, 2, 3.1, 4 kind of a deal. And again, I'm using that archive folder structure, so again, I can just kind of drag these over. So when the client, you know, I, I got to bring the files to the client or whatever, it, all I'm looking at is the final files. Version 5 is the final. But if I need to go back, you know, it's easy to get to.
Now, one other thing in another video I talk about is why I have a submix track and, and a main track. So in this here, what, these two files that are exported are nearly the same, except the main track has some limiters on it, which makes it so that I can send this file to my client. Uh, I usually just right click and then in, uh, encode selected audio file. It makes it an M4A and I send that to the client and then they um, you know, are able to hear that loud kind of mastered version but I exported the submix at the same time as I exported the like the demo, you know, for the client, the the master version. Um, so that way they get the version that they would want to listen to. And if they say number five is the one, I already have the submix exported and I can take that to mastering right away. I don't have to go back to the project and re-export after they give me the approval. So you'll notice every single time I export a main and a submix, main and a submix. So that way it just makes this a lot easier um, for me the second the client gives me that approval. Uh, and if they, you know, who knows, maybe there'll be a reason I'll go back in the, and grab one of these submixes later. Maybe I'll just delete them. And then we go over and we have another project within the project. So this is when I'm mastering the project myself. And when I master it, uh, I just create the project file with inside that the the main one. So that way, uh, again, if I want to compress this all and send it out, I have all of it in one place, I don't have to go and find it in two different folders. So it's just pretty much the same idea, same rules apply, I put master in brackets before it. So that way, it's very clearly visibly the master and the exported files will end up having the master in it, their own versioning structure, but they'll just, you know, um, have stuff set up that way. You know, these here are just some ways that I go about organizing things to save time, right? Putting in the BPM, the key of the song saves me time later, saves other people time later, you know, thinking about archiving folders so that you don't have a mess of things versioning your files um, and keeping that organized helps you how you you organize the files that the client sends you can really help you save time anyways i hope you found this helpful if you did let me know that in the comments if you didn't let me know that too and if there's anything else like this that you would find beneficial let me know that as well anyways peace